Last year, I decided to do Junk Journal January with MIG journals, and I did all the prompts, and this is the little book that I had from last year. It's quite, quite chunky. And this year, I thought, oh, that was really hard to get all those days in, and I ended up doing a whole bunch of the prompts on one day at the end, and <laughs> various things like that, trying to get it to complete the assignment. So this year, I thought, I'm not going to do that, but I changed my mind. I've decided what I'm going to do instead of committing to do the entire list of prompts, which is 31. I'm just going to pick and choose and do whatever I feel like doing. And I've decided that instead of doing a journal like this one that is um, regular pages bound in like this, that I'm going to do an accordion journal. And I've only done one accordion journal before. It was this one that I made. I copied this as closely as I could of one that Barbara from 49 Dragonflies had done. And she was copying one that she had seen Susie Shabby Soul do. And I believe that Susie Shabby Soul is a representative of some kind of Tim Holtz. And so she used a lot of his images and things in hers. And I had some of these people that I used in mine too. But anyway, this was the first one I'd ever done. And it, it was hard and it was fun all at the same time. And I, I put the pockets and the things in as much as I could like she did, and I, I made my own egg, and she had an egg there and various things. So that's how this came about. And I decided that I would do an accordion style journal for my junk journal January this year. And not to put a lot of stress on myself to make it something as complicated as this one was, but to just make it a simple um, accordion fold out of book page. This is just from a novel I got at the dollar store. I folded this first page and I've decided that I want my pages to be about this size, which is about uh, five and a half by three and a half. I'm just going to add pages to this by gluing onto this strip and folding them back and forth until I have about um, five panels on one side. So it's about 10 10 pages. I think that's what I'm going to do. I may add more later, but to start, that's what I'm going to use. And I just tore these out of the book so that the edge is, is pretty ragged, but that's okay. I, that's what it, it's just going to be. It's going to be ragged. And I, I may or may not cover some of that up. I'm going to get glue paper here. But what I'm going to do is just use my glue stick, which is Elmer's Craft Bond Extra Strength Glue Stick. And I'm just going to put the glue on this flap. Like that. Pretty thick so it stays, hopefully. And put this on here like that. Okay. So then I have one, two, and then I'm gonna fold this one back. Well, it folds there where I folded it before. And then fold this one. Hopefully, straight. Use my bone folder to press it down good. Keep it straight. Although, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect. It's not going to be perfect because I don't do perfect. <laughs> but anyway, you just fold them back and forth. And I may make this one a little bit shorter just for the variety of it. I don't know. So let's see how many panels we have now. There's one, two, three, four. So I'll put another page on and it's probably gonna give me more than five panels, but we'll just see what happens here. It doesn't really matter. You can make it as big or as small as you want it to be. I guess technically you would need three panels to make a accordion or concertina journal. But we're gonna have more than that. Okay. That folds back. And then I may just leave these on um, the extra panels until I decide what I'm going to do so I could add more easily if I decide to do that. Okay. 
And then this one is, is the end. Okay. So let's see what we've got here. It's probably way more than I anticipate wanting. Let's see what we have total. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And that one was the one I counted to begin with. So, t 12 panels. I'm going to leave it at that because it's slightly less than half of the month's prompt. So, I think I can manage that. And if I decide that I want to add more, I can do it adding to this flap. So, that's just what I want to show you today. And so that I'm... I have my prompts written down over here. I don't have a printer, so I just wrote them down on my, in my book. And I'm, I'm just going to pick out the ones that I want, or I might write them on strips of paper and draw prompts to challenge myself. I'm not sure about that yet. The other thing I wanted to show you was this little book that I made out of a envelope, a window envelope. This is the kind of book that you could um, also use to do junk journal January. It doesn't have very many pages in it, but it's sewn together in the middle, and you, if you made it, you could put as many pages as you wanted to in it, and it makes a nice little small book, but um, large enough to be creative on the pages. So, that's just another option there. I look forward to working on this um, accordion journal again a second time and seeing how it turns out. I decided I wanted to put a cover on this so that it didn't just start with the first prompt. And what I'm using is one of these time cards. I got this at Dollar Tree, and I was happy to find that because I hadn't seen any of these old ones. So these are new, and they can be distressed if you want to do that. I just used this stencil by Tim Holtz. I don't know what the name of it is. I don't think this one has a name layering stencil is all it says up there but anyway it's this one that has these swirls and flourishes on it and a makeup brush and bundled sage and distress oxide and just kind of i just put the stencil on there and just kind of went over not completely over the whole thing but just in various places and i i started out i tried it out on this side so i could see how it was going to look i think this brush has some um other colors in it so it kind of came out a little brownish looking which I'm okay with that. In fact, I kind of like it. So that is what I did to that. And I just tore this down to be a little closer to fit on the cover. And then I got a piece of this paper. This is um, Everyday Papers by American Crafts. I got this at Dollar General. And it has one sheet of every one of those um, various designs on there. So I chose to use this one. The, the polka dot one, and I just tore the end of it off so I'd have that. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna glue this down um, just far enough so that it's under there and leave it hanging so that I can wrap it to the other side if I decide I wanna do that later. And um, I think I'm gonna ink around that page right there. I think I'll use the green, just to ink these edges a little bit so they stand out that they're torn. Too, even though I didn't tear that edge. Okay. All right. Now, I'm going to um, just glue this edge and then lay the paper down on that. I'm using the Elmer's glue stick. It doesn't have to stick out very far beyond the uh, time card. So I'm just gonna make it about that wide. And place this on there. Since that edge is torn, I'm gonna just use the straight edge underneath there. And it just needs a little bit there, so. 
And I'm gonna leave it sticking up below and above and below that too, just because I might wanna turn that to the other side as well. So we'll see how that does. Okay, so then I'm just gonna glue this down and put it on that page. Cover up my pretty swirls on that side. I think I'm gonna put just some Fabri-Tac around the edges of this because I want it to stay stuck. And it seems like lately I haven't had very much success with some of my glue is not sticking very well. That didn't make sense. I had not, I've not had much success with my glue sticking. <laughs> not sticking is the, is the problem. Okay, I'm just gonna get this on here along that edge because that's gonna be definitely next to that. And across here and there the bottom and I think it sticks out a little further so that glue may be sticking out there I don't know okay whoops still glued there okay I thought I saw a glob of glue on there there it is get rid of that okay I did like this and I want it to go to that edge pretty closely Move it down. Okay. You now that's kind of sticky. Take this dry wipe here and see if I can wipe it off. Okay. All right. Now. I use this set of dies, number dies, to cut 2024, and these are still stuck in the in the die. I, when I bought these, I was expecting the numbers to come out big and fat like that looks on that side, but they're skinny. So I wish they were fatter, but they're not. So we'll just they'll be what they are. I also have this date stamp, and I thought that might be neat to just stamp it in there, maybe up and down on Monday, because the first is on Monday this year, coming up. I'll use the image photo for that, just so it stands out a little bit more. All right, I'm just gonna turn this. And I think I'm gonna put my felt under there to get a good, good image, hopefully. There we go. That looks kind of cute. I cut these numbers out of this cardstock that I got at Hobby Lobby. It comes in a pad. Wait, I chose this one that has a lot of green in it because I, I wanted to have the numbers darker and have some green in them. That too doesn't have a whole lot of green in it. But anyway, that's that was my plan. So I think I'm just gonna put them on. Hopefully they'll all fit on here. It may have to go kind of sideways. Something like that. Do I like that? Do I want something behind it? I may just use a piece of this sparkly tool and just kind of crunch it up behind there. Trim this off about right there. This is that potato sack mesh. And I think what I'm gonna do is put that behind there and maybe put the tool over the top of it. So I'll just cut off a piece of this about like that. Everything's sticking to me. <laughs> and it could be a little less ragged on that edge, I guess. There. And 
maybe not so long. I may trim it back when I get it going down. Okay, and then this. Let's see if I can do this and make it look like I want it to or if it's gonna be weird. I like the way it looks, but I'm a little concerned about if it's going to work out to be right. So we're going to do it anyway. If it if I hate it, I'll just peel it off and put something else on there. So we'll see how that goes. Too, to stick that tool down into. And I'm going to scrunch it up a little bit on here just to make it look a little, I don't know, festive or something. Not use my silicone. Um, thing to keep it from sticking to me, hopefully. <laughs> oh, I don't know. This may not be a very good idea, but we'll see. Okay. I just kind of want it to be a little bit scrunchy. All right. So I've got 2024. Two oh two four. Okay, that's what I'm gonna do. We'll see how it goes. I guess if these numbers were as fat as the dies are, they wouldn't fit on my page. So I guess that is a good thing that they do fit. Okay, I'm gonna put this one down. Hopefully this will look right when I get done. <laughs> Come on, Glue. Oh, I got that too much there. Okay. I don't know if that's right going that way or not, but we're going to do it, so... Oh. Whoops. Don't want you falling down on there. kind of cute. I hope. <laughs> I never know until I get it stuck down if I'm going to like it or not. I'm not sure I do, but we'll see. We'll just press on and uh, see what happens. That is my little cover for my accordion journal. Happy 2024. Thanks so much for watching. 
and I will see you next year. I hope you have a wonderful end of this year and a great be beginning of next year. If you think about it and want to, give me a thumbs up. Appreciate it so much, and I appreciate you watching. Bye-bye.